Sexy People Podcast. I'm Dan Frigolat. I'm here with uh, Sinful Solar. Thank you for doing this. Hi, thank you for having me. What's going on? Um, so the starting point for me was I found you either on Twitter or OnlyFans. You have an OnlyFans. Um, yes. How long have you had that page? Um, I started OnlyFans in 2020, March of 2020, I think. Okay. So literally like pandemic hits and you're like, yeah, OnlyFans is hot. I can't, yeah. I can't remember now collectively where we were at as a, as a people. Like, I think I knew that OnlyFans existed, but I think a lot of people didn't view it as like a, as like a necessity until we were yeah. home and doing the pandemic. And then it got huge. Like you were aware of OnlyFans prior. Yeah, prior I had tried setting up an account, but I just didn't, I don't know. I wasn't committed to it because I was actually a stripper. So I was doing that. So I couldn't really balance both of them at the time. So I took a little break from attempting to make an account. And then I came back when the pandemic hit because I wasn't at the club. Yeah. Wait, so how immediately did they shut strip clubs down? Um, not until like March, I think like when the shutdown happened, that's when they started closing the strip clubs, but I was scared. So I didn't want to risk it. Yeah. So they just called you and they were like, Hey, don't come to work. Yeah. Cause they, it was closed. <laughs> yeah. 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 They just, it just happened. Like we just stopped showing up to work and. Um, they just opened up the clubs probably last year, I think, is when they started opening yeah. up all the clubs. And then, so have you gone back? Or are you just I have not on gone back. Okay. I am planning on going back in the fall, though. You are? Yes, but I still do plan on doing OnlyFans. I've figured out a way that I can make it work. Yeah. And I love doing OnlyFans, so. What, what would you say is the difference between like the skill set of being a stripper and what you bring to your OnlyFans? Um, well, being a stripper is definitely, I would say, harder, Yeah. in my opinion, in the physical aspect of it, because you need, like, stamina, you need upper body strength, you need all that stuff. But, like, the marketing aspect of OnlyFans is definitely not easy, as easy as people think it is. It's definitely a job. Um, and, but that's pretty much it that I think is the poll. That's yeah, the which, only difference. So I think a lot of people started when, like, when we didn't know what the hell we were doing and, and we're in the pandemic, I think a lot of people were just like, I know how to do the poll. I should just film the poll at my house. Yeah. And make that my only fans. Is that, was that your starting point? No, actually it wasn't. I didn't have, um, I actually was in Hawaii when the pandemic started. So oh, wow. I, yeah, I had been out there for a while and I got stuck out there um, because of the pandemic, but I came back and um, that's when I started doing OnlyFans because I was at home, um, but I was in the process of moving into my own apartment um, because my partner was out in Hawaii. So he came out here and, um, so we didn't have necessarily a setup for me to have a poll and film in the apartment and stuff because we were in the process of moving in. So then starting point, you, you go, I don't know what other people are doing on OnlyFans. What like what's your what was your starting? You're just like, I'm going to show this or show that. Like, how do you decide what your like target is or like what you what you specifically would go for? Because obviously there's different flavors and everybody's doing yeah. uh, a spectrum of things. How do you like decide, self-decide what you're gonna do for that? Um, so I had already been doing sex work prior to, besides the stripping, I had been doing sex work prior to OnlyFans, but I was only doing it through Twitter. So I would sell just nudes on Twitter and I would do it that way. I would sell custom videos and stuff like that. So that's kind of, I just transferred what I would do on Twitter over to OnlyFans and Custom content is mainly what I would make money off of, definitely. Yeah. So, but for like my page, I would post maybe like a couple like shirtless pictures first just to entice people to get them to subscribe. I, my subscription price was, I think, to begin with, I think it was $10. And I'm back at that price now, but 
um yeah it was I think ten dollars so what I did is I just I didn't have a not safe for work Twitter at the time so I would just promo on my personal account and I would just um post honestly post selfies I posted a lot of selfies and that brought in a lot of people I don't know people like that like it was just people asking me if they could buy pictures from my camera roll like random pictures really? like yeah. that's the kind of clientele that I brought in to begin with but the longer that I did OnlyFans the more exposure I got so the more fetishes and the more kinks that came to my profile and um I'm a very sexually expressive person so I welcome like there's no kink shaming on my on my page there's no fetish we're fetish friendly over here um with a few exceptions you know the no-nos but what yeah what are the no-nos no age play, no racism, no homophobia, no transphobia, any bigotry is not allowed on my page. Yeah. Wait, why is age play? Okay, because the idea is that you're doing something that's illegal. That's the idea. Like, oh, I'm too young. Right? That's what you're saying? Yes. Yeah, like, it's sexualizing a child and I am not with that. There's no, I don't make any exceptions. It doesn't matter how much money you want to offer me, you're going to get blocked. Yeah. Interesting. Now, so is this something that that you find a lot? Do you find that you're you have an ambiguous age? So people come to you for that kind of energy? I personally have never experienced anyone coming to me for that kind of content. But I do know that a lot of creators have. And yeah, I as well as other creators, like we're not with that. It's not cool to sexualize a child. And it's not cool to engage in sexual activity while pretending to be a child that's just it's off limits it's not something that anyone should do and it, that's one of the fetishes that it's no I there should that. be shame in that i do support that i don't know it's interesting we because now we're in a, and we're in a place where like um like 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 knowledge and sex positivity and like um like reality and being woke are all sort of meeting and so now we're in this place where it's like, yeah, your fetish is just like an illegal thing. So that's, we don't want yeah, to support exactly. that. Exactly. I, I appreciate that. I never, I never thought of that, um, that aspect. That's, that's, that's actually pretty critical and pretty important. Um, so I like that. Wait, so you said you're back at 10. So were you, where have yes. you gone? Have you gone above and or have you gone below? I have gone above. I've gone, I think, as high as 17. I'm not, I've varied. I've gone, like, jumped from, like, 17, 12 to 16, just all over the place. But right now, I'm set at 10. It's still 10 right be, now. Like, is this like a guess and check kind of thing? Like, you get the most people that show up at 10? Or, yes, from what I've seen so yeah. far, the most subs that I've gotten have come from when my price is set at ten. Yes. Yeah, I think we. Yeah, I think we're we're at, we are in this weird point. I think I think during the pandemic, we all sort of decided that um, we could spend money on an OnlyFans. This was like the first time this kind of um, opportunity was there for us. Before that, like we could buy like a like a single video here and there and that sort of <laughs> thing. Um, but to like subscribe and just support the people that we appreciate. Yes, exactly. Um, we're at that, we're at that like, like perfect, like period of time where we just go, I like this person. I want them to stay in the business. I'm a subscribe. It's like, you know, it's like I buy coffee. I may as well buy my porn. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, what, so when, so if I subscribe for $10 or everybody subscribes for $10, it's just open page from there. And then if you want extra stuff, customs yes. and otherwise, then you, then yes. you add on. Yes. So I don't at the moment, uh, the only content that I do post is solo content on my page. I don't have any collabs, anything like that, but I do have collab content for purchase, Okay. but it's just not on my page. I do promo and, um, alert, but my subs that I do have that content available, but public consumption. Okay. I think it's a good line. I like that. Um, so then you, so you were talking about how now you have a Twitter that's safe for work and one that isn't, um, do you yeah. find that this is the best way to, to kind of like preview your page for people? And then do you have the same thing on an OnlyFans? You have a free OnlyFans that then gets you to, gets them to the sub page. I actually haven't experimented with that. I've thought about doing it, but 
um i just don't have the time to keep up with two only fans right now yeah but i have thought a lot about it but with the twitter aspect of it i do think that it's been really effective for me especially because um i like to keep my not safe for work life separate from my safer work life just sure. because my my city is some different it's yeah so do you think that there's people um I guess in your not safe for work like that have no idea what's going on or how to find you on the other side? Um, definitely there have been some people that um they were new to the scene, so they DM me and ask me questions like that. Um, there's some people that uh contact me through my safe for work account too. Like yeah. they'll reach out for custom content on there and I don't mind it. It doesn't matter to me whatever however they reach me they could reach me i'm now always down to make money <laughs> yeah but you said you, you like to keep them separate so are you doing yeah. like do you think you're doing a pretty good job of 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 walking that line or it's just like if you want to see the other thing go to this one it's not that they don't they're not aware of either one um i think no it's not they're not aware of either one it's not like that um i don't remember if I still have it in my bio. I think I might have took it out. But on my safer work, I do have my not safer work in my bio. But I'm not yeah. sure if on my not safer work that I have my personal on in my bio. But if they've come across my safer work Twitter, I want them to know, hey, I also do OnlyFans. So if you're with that, you should check it out. Yeah. Have you found yeah. um have you spent have found aspects of your life where people are passing judgment? I mean, it feels like every oh, every day definitely. we go a little bit further with like accepting things yeah. and people in this kind of lifestyle. Are you still bumping into judgment and like closed mindedness? Definitely. Yes, that's what I mean when I say my, my city is different. Like here, it's there's people who do OnlyFans, but it's not like they do actual sex work. They just post, you know, like selfies here and there. And yeah. That's what it is. So the girls that actually are sex workers that we make, we make content for pleasure and all this stuff. Like we have subs, we have regulars, we do this for a living. So those girls, the girls like me, we get hated on a lot. Like it's always a discourse on yeah. Twitter about what's socially acceptable and what's not, what makes you a hoe and what makes you not a hoe. Like, um, definitely it's really hard to find girls who are genuinely okay with the fact that you're a sex worker because I have had experiences where I make friends and they say that they're with it but they pass judgment behind my back about what I do for a living it's very hard I'm but thankfully I was blessed with family who is very accepting of what I do for work as long as you know we don't talk about it it's it's all cool. So on in that aspect of my life, I have been very blessed. But in the friendship category, it's always been very difficult to, as a sex worker, to find genuine friendships. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so many things. Okay, so that's that's great that your family's on board. Um, for a lot of people, that's like the hardest part. Yes, uh, definitely. It always makes it always it always confuses me because a, a person that, um goes for a particular life and then let, let's remove sex work. Like I'm a comedian, like even a person who would go for that kind of lifestyle, that means that everything uh, in my upbringing uh, made me feel like that that was an option and that was a choice. And like, that was like um, a bunch of choices led me to this. So for the family to not accept it is, is just weird because it's like for people that are sex workers, you, you would assume that there's like some kind of sex positivity going on in their life and in their mm -hmm. lifestyle. So, it seems weird to try to hide this kind of thing from your family um, because yeah. you're the people that that like, in a sense, pushed you to to go this route. Um, so that's great that those people are on board. And then you know to speak to the thing where it's like, okay, so so one of the things is there is this weird um, idea I think with people that just loosely started an OnlyFans and that like want to take advantage of like selling a nude here and there that they're not like yeah. part of the community or that they're above the community. And this like yeah. blows my mind. It's like you want to do an element of it or like I've interviewed people who um, and porn star is such a weird 
word and phrase and title, but I've interviewed mm-hmm. people that have only fans where they do explicit content and they don't consider themselves making porn. Um, so we've done a lot of weird things in the last few years mm-hmm. with coming up with different terms and different ideas. And I think the word porn for a lot of people is like not a word that they associate themselves with or even like that they relate to. Even like if they're like uh, masturbating or look at naked, looking at naked photos, they might not consider that porn, which I think mm-hmm. is interesting. Um, so would you say that you make porn? I would say that yes, I do make porn, yes. And then what do you say to the people like that for some reason they're like selling news on the internet and they think that that's not porn? How do we have that discussion with these folks? Um, I'm not sure. I guess some people don't like being viewed as something so subjective. Uh, sure, okay, sure. So I guess it's just like a to each its own. But me, I'm totally cool with the whole um porn aspect of it i consider myself a porn star yeah great i love that and then what (laughs) um and so what this is what this is interesting too because the same thing it's like because words are subjective to some extent and especially lately we've all decided that we're all experts on whatever we want our thing to be at what point do you think that someone is a sex worker what is that what does that phrase mean and what does it mean to you me us as sex workers there's always like you said those people that loosely uh want to associate with the community but not fully um dive in and indulge and like make it what it is to be a sex worker because it's honestly not easy like you said like some people very much struggle with the idea of coming out to their family as a sex worker, that's always a big struggle. The judgment that we pass, all this stuff. It's very hard to, um, like when you make this your living, it's not like a 95. It's yeah. it's totally different. And it's a lot harder than a 95 because it takes a lot of mental strain to be able to be a sex worker. Um, it's, you are giving yourself to these people for their own sexual pleasure. And sometimes it's just very draining, like um, making content sometimes is exhausting, like having to get ready and pretend to be sexy when you're not feeling sexy, but you know, you got to make money, you got to make money. Right. So it just, and like you said, that some of these people think that they are above, the sex worker title um because sex worker is a very broad title like there's like stripping that's sex work as well so that's also a sex an an example of a sex worker um there's just many different aspects it all depends but when it comes to OnlyFans, um i think like to be an actual sex worker is like you make a livelihood off of this thing. Like this is something that you rely on. Yeah. Like whether it's your second job or it's your primary job, that this is where you get your income from. Yeah. And that you are fully supportive. Like you can't call yourself a sex worker if you're not fully supportive of all the other sex workers. Like you can't be an OnlyFans girl and hate on strippers. You can't be a stripper and hate on an OnlyFans girl. Like, and there's, there's just a, range like it's very broad there's just no no specific description of what a sex worker is but i like it i I like it i I just i want to because i do want to figure out because it is if there's this idea that like i can go on and sell pictures of my tits and that and then that doesn't make me a sex worker and i can judge sex workers it's like I want to be able to have these, um, like, like these definite. Because it's like, once you sell that photo, aren't you, aren't you a sex worker? So it's like, and it's tough because it's like, okay, are you how much are you money? How much are your money you making? And, all these things. and uh-huh. I think everybody thinks they can literally just go on an OnlyFans and make rent and sell foot pics. And then yeah, yeah, and it's and not that easy. People, yeah. Uh, since I've had this podcast, people will be like, oh, I could sell foot pics. Like I get this thing, whatever. And it's like, could you though? Like, could you literally? <laughs> Could you send me 80 photos a week that are a little bit different? 
mm-hmm. that, and like yeah. give me that commitment every week. Um, yeah, like it's definitely a commitment doing sex work because you yeah. do have regulars and these people expect for you to have content for them and yeah. for you to be able to keep up with it. If you want the money, you got to do the work. Do you? So I don't. I guess I don't know how to ask this um, because of how things have changed. So when I started looking at porn as as a kid, the idea of the industry was always like, this is a person, they're acting, and they're and they're trying to like put on like a character. And I think character and characterization was 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 bigger in the eighties, nineties. Um, and I think p- like like being genuine is more important now. But when you started stripping, did you feel like you created um, a persona? that was different than your own. And then do you bring that to the only fans and you live in that same space um, where you, um, this is, this is, we got 10 minutes. So w- when we pop off, let's pop back on. Cause I forgot yeah. that the, that the new, that the new thing has the time limit. Is that all right? Yeah. Let me re ask. Um, so when you started stripping, did you create a persona uh, for yourself? And then uh, like, where you go on stage and you're this different or it's different than who you are when you go see like, do you view yourself as a different person on stage as like when you're hanging out with your family or when you're home? And do you bring that same thing to OnlyFans or is your thing about being genuine and being the same you that wakes up that makes a video? Um, That's a really good question. I think that it's a little bit of both. Honestly, Solar is actually my stripper name. So that's how I got that name. Um my partner made up the name for me so uh i stuck with that and that's what i started when i started stripping and i just brought that over to OnlyFans. so when i started stripping yeah it definitely felt like i was solar like i wasn't i wasn't me i was her and it was a really good experience being able to let go on stage and um feel more free to be able to be expressive like dancing is really fun like it it is an expressive art especially when like if the dj like he plays your track you know like you have signature like there's girls we all have signature of what kind of music we like when we're on the pole like all that stuff like i definitely think that yeah solar is a character but she does have a little sprinkle of me in there okay that's a good answer so that what does that name mean to you? So um, my partner came up with the name. Uh, it was when we were friends still. Actually, we weren't partners yet. But um, so I'm a Leo. Uh, so solar being the sun, I'm a Leo. So that's how he made the connection. And I just I fell in love with it. Yeah. And so that's how solar came about. So yeah, it means something to me. Yeah. It means a lot to me. So for people that don't know how dancing works, um, and stripping works, like the DJs, are you giving your track to the DJ or are they picking it for you? And then if it's that way, is there like, can you, if you go on stage and you got beef with somebody, can they (laughs) put the wrong song on and like fuck up your money? Oh my God, that's never happened to me. But I mean, I think it could be possible because we're all rotating on the stage. So if a girl's up next behind you and she wants a specific song and she asks the DJ, he's going to play it for her. But I mean, me and all the girls at the club are cool. So I never had no problems like that. But um, but if you got yeah. the wrong song, can you still do your, can you still do your thing? Yeah, yeah, I can still do my thing. Like it. It's not every time that you get on stage, usually just when it's your first, uh, when you're on stage one, that's when he'll play like a song of your genre. But throughout the set, he'll like um, play like different genres of music, especially because like I said, like each girl is getting onto stage one. So she's going to play her song. Right. But I mean, I guess, yeah, if the DJ's feeling a little feisty that night, I guess he could switch it up if he wanted to. <laughs> I did, because I did. we did do an episode of this podcast that was all on stripper politics and how to, like, play nice as strippers. Because you can't, like, it, just like anything else, like, the, 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 the setup is to make it seem like you and the other strippers are in competition so that you don't, like... <laughs> 
go upstairs and be like, yo, where's like, where's the, where's my good money? You know, they don't want like management in any situation doesn't want you like asking management questions. So they try to create a scenario where you could like bicker amongst yourselves. So we did a whole episode on stripper politics and like when it goes wrong and when there's like mm -hmm. stripper beefs. Uh, so I'm glad you haven't experienced that. that level. Yeah, personally, not me. <laughs> So wait, are we are we at liberty to say uh, relatively where you are uh, in the world? Sure. Yeah. Where so where so where are you? Uh, I am in Texas. And so my favorite thing about Texas is because it's so big, and everybody who's in Texas thinks that their section of Texas is different than the other section of Texas. So it's like uh, people will be like, "Oh, I'll be like, I went to Texas," and then everybody from Texas will be like, well, "Where did you go?" And then if I say a city that isn't their city, they'll be like, "That's not even Texas, bro." So where <laughs> so where are you in this giant state? Like which which thing? Which section of Texas? I'm in the south. Okay. All right. I'm in the south of Texas. And so the you said the, like around you being a sex worker is could be scary, could be um, not accepting. That's how you feel about that area. Um. Honestly, no. I don't really give. It. I don't really give. <laughs> I don't care. It has. It doesn't bother me anymore. Um. I've learned to not care. It doesn't matter to me what people think of me. The people that. I want to accept me, already accept me, so I don't have many problems with how anybody else views what I do for work. It doesn't really matter to me. Got it, got it. So how many hours do you put into an OnlyFans every week to like do the $10 and have it happen the way you want it to happen? Uh, well, I post content every day, so I try to post at least two, three times a day. Okay. Um, and I'm sending out customs also throughout the week. So customs in itself, I could be filming for hours on end, honestly. Yeah. I've filmed for probably like seven hours one time. Okay. Um, yeah, it was with breaks in between, but still it was probably like a majority of what I did that day was filming customs. So I'd say like at least like five hours a day. How does how does it work for I don't know what like the the goals are when you when you come up with something like this. So it's like it, if somebody reached out to you to do mainstream, is that something that you'd be interested in? Like studio Define. porn? Um I'm not sure. I thought about it. It's per, it's a cool idea, but I'm just not sure if I want to get involved in that industry. And then starting as a stripper and then moving to only fans and then going back to stripping what's the the sort of life which which career do you think is going to last longer what's the lifespan and sort of what's the goal of each um aspect um i don't know i think only fans might last longer just because i get to do that from home and i don't want to be in a club forever yeah um i love the club there's nothing wrong with the club i love being a stripper but it's not something i want to do when i'm like pushing 40. <laughs> yeah because because well why uh partly it's because i already hurt a lot like i'm only 22 <laughs> and <laughs> It's taxing. But, yes, it is. It's a lot. <laughs> like, it's a lot of work being a stripper. It is. Especially, you have to deal with actual human interaction. And honestly, who knows where we're going to be with all that, with all this stuff yeah. coming up. Yeah. I don't know. I'm actually kind of scared to go back to the club. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, it, we are We are actually... Um, everybody wants COVID to be over, but we, there are, I keep hearing about more and more people with COVID. Um, mm -hmm. and then now we got, and now we got monkey pox. Monkey pox. Yes. And, um, we got all the things. Polio is making a reappearance as That's, well. I heard, yeah, polio. I don't even know yes. enough. This is, this is what's crazy. I don't know enough about polio to be scared of it. That's where I'm at. Like they, everything's fear mongering, right? They want us to be afraid mm -hmm. of everything, but like, I need to, I don't know if I'm supposed to be afraid of monkey pox or, uh, polio. I was doing this thing oh, about afraid. 
What's that? I'm very afraid. <laughs> yeah, I was, but I, uh, I was doing this thing about how we were all supposed to be like the the healthy ones that like made it out, right? Like supposedly now that it's two years uh, after COVID. Um, but I feel like every time I go out of the house now, I like look around and like people are like wearing like knee and knee and arm braces. I feel like we're maybe we're not the healthy ones at all. We're all just like ragged. We all got beat up. Let's do a quick lightning round. Are you ready? Okay. Um, and then none of this really matters. So you can you can say whatever. And then the other thing in the two things isn't going to get offended. Um, cat. Well, perfect timing. Cats or dogs? Cats. <laughs> cats. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, McDonald's or Burger King? Uh, McDonald's. Okay. Um, sushi or tacos? Tacos. Okay. Um, woods or beach? Beach. Beach or, well, oceans or lakes? Ocean. Okay. Um, boats or beach? Beach. It's all just the same thing. Um, what? <laughs> I was just trying to get a, a change. Uh, cars or trucks? Cars. Drive or be driven? Depends. Okay. Um, fly or or drive? Fly. Are you afraid of anything? Uh, bugs. <laughs> Are you allergic to anything? Uh, I'm actually allergic to my cat. Are you really? Yeah, you I have am. one cat, and you're allergic to it. Yes. And but it's but it's worth. So what do you do to not die? I take allergy meds. You do? So you're like constantly yeah. drowsy just so you can love on this cat? Yes. <laughs> it is worth it. What's your cat's name? Her name is Salem. What's the weirdest, um, wait, like Salem, like, like the witch trials or Salem, like, um, like in Oregon? Um, Salem, like the witch trials. Oh no shit. Is she yeah. a black cat? Yeah, she is. She's Has a black she... fucking cat. Okay. What's the weirdest, um, what's the weirdest thing that's ever happened while you're doing content with your cat? Has, has she ever wandered into the scene? Oh my God. Yes. She has <laughs> wandered into a sex tape. How do you, so, um, so obviously then, um, your cat's welcome for your private sexual sessions. Actually, no, after that, we started closing the door. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah I my relationship with my dog and sex I never knew what to do, um because when I when I got a dog I had uh I think a roommate so then I didn't want to make the dog have to like not, I didn't want to not have eyes on the dog, and mm -hmm. so she's like more comfortable just like hanging out in the corner, and having a blanket on her head while sex is going on which is weird this relationship <laughs> that we have with our animals and sex is actually kind of creepy. Um, and it's a thing that I think yeah. that not enough people talk about. Um, <laughs> would you, what would be the weirdest, what would be the, what would be the, if you had to pick a wild animal that you, um, that you had to own, what would you pick? Uh, an elephant. Really? If you could, <laughs> if you could, would you want a full size elephant or, or you'd have to, you'd want to shrink it down? Mm, that'd be funny, but no, I think I want a full size elephant. Really? Farm yeah. life or city life? Farm. Okay. Um, if you had just a bucket of money, um, what would you do different? Uh, well, I would not be living here. I would not be living <laughs> here. That's for Where sure. would you live? Where would you go? I would go to Oregon. Okay. You do like Oregon. Conveniently, yeah, conveniently. You just mentioned Oregon. <laughs> yeah, I would go to Oregon. Okay. What, uh, what's, what is, what is so, um, enticing about Oregon? Well, they have all four seasons. Yeah. Texas does not. <laughs> what do you have? Do you have, you have like two seasons? Yeah. We have spring and summer. Okay. Have you, Even so you've never experienced like, like you've never experienced snow and snowmen and like living um, in that climate? I, no, not living in it. We, there was like snow one time in Texas when I was like, I think eight. And then yeah. the next time I remember that there was snow in Texas was last year in 2021, I think. But for as a snow person, um, 
I'm from upstate New York, Syracuse, uh, mm-hmm. Buffalo, Binghamton, Albany. Um, if you if you live in a place that doesn't get snow and you get snow once, to be fair, that's not even snow. That's some it's weird. Not. That's some weird like texture of like yeah like I, I got we got we, we lived in Ohio when I was a kid and we got snow once and the snow the grass was taller than the snow and then it just turned into this weird like ice like like sheet and uh, and, and everybody was every in Ohio was like oh my god it's snow and they're buying water and they're running to the grocery store and they're buying generators and, and my whole family was like this isn't snow like you guys are and then people in like places don't get snow when they get snow once they like put their cars in ditches all the time because they literally don't know how to not just slam on their brakes yeah well it was actually really bad in texas during because a lot of people died because we were not prepared oh, like this was the one right greg Last abbott year. was yeah. not ready for any of it he told right. us it wasn't he told us it wasn't gonna happen he told us we were gonna be fine so the city nor any part of texas prepared for the blackout or anything that happened i was without power or water for five days the mayor or the or the meteorologist no who said it wasn't going to happen? The governor. Oh, the governor. Of Texas, the Greg governor. Abbott. Yeah. Yes, he said it, we would be fine. And a lot of people died. Like, people froze to death in their homes. Like, it was bad. It was really, really bad. Yeah, yeah. Sorry to make light of it. Um, yeah, that's that's one of the, that's one of the we're, like, we're in this weird. So I, right now I'm in New York, and it, I think it's hotter in New York City right now, it's like 97 in New York City right now. And there's nowhere for the humidity to go. So it's just like when it hits a city, it just sits in the middle. Yeah. And you just just sweat and you go underneath the subway and you just sweat. And uh, uh. it's it's vile. I mean, this the the reality of what we've done to the environment has has come has come around. Yeah. Places that are warm are cold and places that are cold are warm. And we're like, nah, it's that's just that's, that's just the cycle. Yeah. That's just how we do things. So that's interesting. Um, do you think, do you think being sex positive um, allows for you to be more open minded in other aspects of your life? Definitely, yeah. I feel like being more open with my sexuality has definitely helped me open up more as a person as a whole. It yeah. has made me feel more confident and more comfortable in my own skin. It's definitely benefited me in a lot of different aspects. It's interesting too, because it's like it's like. Um, it's like, I don't have a good example, so I'm just going to say something awful, but it's like, I, I can't think of like a lot of people that are like sex positive and then like also racist. Like once you start becoming <laughs> open-minded about one thing, it sort of opens the road for you to become open-minded about all the things. Yeah, but there are some people there in they this just have community. One thing, they just have one thing that they're like, they're like, they're yeah. like progressive about everything. And then they're like, what yes, the, except exactly. for that. <laughs> exactly they pick and choose what they want to be progressive about so that's interesting but you know there's always going to be people like that so in yeah. any kind of community yeah um so what you said you lived in ohio for a little bit or not, not ohio sorry hawaii for a little bit i don't know why that came out that way or you yes, were just I visiting or you were living in hawaii. in hawaii uh i was living in hawaii for a little bit just because of um my partner was living over there so and, that, he was and that's living, where he's he from yeah, he lived over there. So um, I was staying in Hawaii for about two months. And the goal was not to get stuck there because of the pandemic, but you did. Yeah, we were trying to move into an apartment here in Texas. And then you got um, him and you got him and it happened. Yes, it went down. All right. So now you're so now you're so now you're in Texas. You're living there. Uh, you want to be in, you want to have the four seasons of, of Oregon. How long yes. does it take you, you think to, to, to end up in that situation? Um, I give it a few years. It's definitely going to be like a five year plan type of thing. Okay. And then do you, I mean, do you think you could set yourself up in a position where you could literally like go live in wilderness and still be able to make content? Um, I want to live in the wilderness, but I'm scared. I love scary movies. People scare me. Yeah. Wait, so <laughs> but I idea- definitely love exhibitionist content, so I will be out there making oh. content for sure. Now I've heard this weird thing, and I don't know if, if you if you found this. I've heard that like um because of all the restrictions that they're starting to add to things like OnlyFans, um if you do in public type content, sometimes they can get flagged. Yes. So if you do in public content, it has to be not in public. It has to be outdoors 
but no one could have possibly seen me. Yeah, like you have to be specific that no one saw you or that it's like, not public. Yeah. You have then, to like play around with the words that you use for your captions because you can get flagged for being out in public. Yeah. So, what, so then that's interesting because because aren't we paying for the isn't the exhibitionism aren't we paying for the idea of the voyeurism that maybe somebody could have seen? Isn't that yes. So then we're like, now we got to play with this thing. We're like, somebody could have seen if only they came illegally onto my f private property that I was doing this thing in the back <laughs> with the fences. Um, yeah. So, so then how do you feel about that? Is, doesn't that to some extent become um, dishonest? Does, does the restrictions of, of OnlyFans and stuff like that uh, take away from some of the fetishes and things that we find sexy? Yes, definitely they do. OnlyFans takes away a lot. Like from they have so many restrictions like um they don't allow blood so like period content is a no-go yeah. you can't send you can't send it you can't post it you can't talk about now, it now are you into period content or is that something that people are asking for or it's just like it happens sometimes it's something that people are asking for yeah i only do period stuff and would someone that I actually care about because yeah. I don't know I'm into all that occultist stuff so that's magic and I'm not with that to engage in that with just anybody so interesting wait so wait cross that over for me like uh where does where does where does where does uh period sex meet the occult and magic explain that blood to me. magic yeah why you're having sex with someone when they're on their period yeah. you basically are giving yourself to them like yeah it's that's why i say it. i have only ever engaged in period sex with people who i am in relationships with yeah and not everybody <laughs> do you do you do anything um do you do any like so i i, I recently dated somebody who um kept their period blood and would like pour it into plants and like would like oh uh, would, my like, best send it. friend does that <laughs> and would like send it uh like 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 they would like soak their blood like soak like it. soak like their wishes in period blood and like and like send it into the universe to like do you believe in all this stuff yeah i do okay and the period blood on plants works it's yeah like an actual fertilizer this is what's funny. This is and this is how dumb dudes are. Was like I was thinking about the other day, and so I was like, "What happens if I just come into my plants? Is that good?" Because no, I'm a plant dad. Yeah. And then I Google it. Was like, no, come is good for nothing. <laughs> Period blood is good for everything, and come is good for nothing. That's how useless men are. It's so funny. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um. So that's fun. Okay. So all right. So the period blood. A cult. I want to now. I want to read up on on, uh, on on period blood magic. This is this is a good idea. Um, so yeah. can't do out. So wait, why is outdoor and exhibitionism exciting for you? I honestly just love the aesthetic of being naked outside. Yeah. That's what I love about it. Yeah. it. And I just it makes me feel more connected to the earth. Like yeah. it's it not it's not even about the content for me. It's about like the feeling that I get from that uh, being naked outside. You want to be you want to be able to just walk around naked outside, regardless of whether or not. It makes if it was outside. socially acceptable and there yeah. was no such thing as sexual assault, I would be walking around naked all the time. <laughs> yeah, that bums me. That, that those the the what would happen if there were no men uh, posts always bum me out because it's always uh, women. It, uh, it's always as simple as women being like, I would go on a bike ride if there were no men. Yeah, I would take a walk. After I would dark. take a walk at night. Yes, yeah. exactly. Men are awful. Like, We're the worst thing. Um, I look outside of the window at nighttime and it's so dark and I get scared to walk to my car. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, so you said you're into horror movies, but you think, but you're, so you, there's a nature aspect of horror movies that scares you. You think, so because I yeah. come from kind of the woods, um, I'm, I've always been like all my unconscious fears are like, being in a city and like having a person like walk behind you. But then I've lived in New York city for 15 years. So then mm -hmm. I like teeter. So sometimes, so like when I've been in the city for a long time, it's like, Oh, like I'd rather be that there's people around. Um, but then sometimes you'll hit like a weird pocket in New York city where nobody's around, which also feels scary. 
And then I'm, I think I'm in a place now where if I went to like go live in the woods, I think that would scare me. So you're, you're at this, like the, the darkness and quiet, does quiet scare you more than loud? Honestly, yeah, it does. I'm actually from the, I'm from East Texas, so I'm up from the country. So I'm out from like the middle of nowhere also. Yeah. So I don't know, but it still scares me. <laughs> but then also I like, am, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I'm definitely more scared of scary movies that involve people and not like entities yeah. and stuff. Cause you know, people can do bad shit. Yeah. Yeah. People yeah. just People just do do that. If you, actually, if, that, that's kind of funny because um, that's literally that's what Scooby Doo was. Scooby every episode of Scooby Doo was like, oh, it's a ghost, and then it was just like a yeah. dude. It was just Brian, yeah. being a dick, exactly, right? So <laughs> just being a just, it's just not mad. a ghost. It's just Brian is killing and raping people. Very plausible, even as even for kids. Yeah. So, I want to I want to say. I want to give like a gift to the people that listen to this episode and that follow you on the, on the social medias and stuff. And so your, your Instagram is, I know, I know what the tag is, but what's your, give us your, give us or, or give us your Twitter. Sorry. My Twitter is sinful solar. Sinful solar. S I N F U L S O L A R. Yes. Sinful okay. solar. And then it's the same thing. Your only fans is sinful solar six, six, six. Yes, six, you, do, six, you, you do believe in, in all the in all the witch in occult and all that. <laughs> Does that make it into the content? Um, I've tried incorporating it, yes, but I have never posted anything. Interesting. But I do plan to dabble in that on my page. Is there too. is there like witch uh and like Wicca type stuff that you think can't be posted on OnlyFans? Definitely. I feel like they have some restrictions on yeah. that. And we got We always got to read like the, we always got to read like the privacy, like, cause they change it every couple, every couple. They do. Years. They do. They update it every so often. And I know that the period thing, as well as like pee and stuff, that's from one of like the most recent updates, maybe in the last three. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's no, so there's no peeing. Yeah, no. Only fans is, is leaning to this thing where the the safest way to make content is to just make content solo content. In yeah, your home, in your home. Yeah, pretty much because honestly, they flag people too for making content with other creators. Like um, one time, I almost lost my OnlyFans because I was making content with my partner, and they had released that you had to have like a model agreement. Right. So. I almost lost my OnlyFans and I had so much money in my balance. I was tripping so hard. Like I was so scared and it was a long they, they process. Pull it, they'll pull it before they give you your paycheck. Yeah. Oh, wow. So like, and OnlyFans is always like having issues with like their website and stuff. Like, their website, honestly, is it's easy to maneuver, but the customer service is not the best sometimes. Right, right. They take a while, like okay. the process. Um, even as a creator, it, you're saying? Yes, as a creator, like the process that I would, I don't know, I don't s subscribe to any other OnlyFans other than yeah. like for like for like and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, so, so I don't know what it's like to like how it works to purchase content on the other end. I don't know what the experience is with that, but I know with the experience of being a creator. I've had lots of issues with OnlyFans yeah. with payouts and like with my account, the safety of my account, all kinds of stuff. People, people trying, people trying to hack you. Uh, yes. Uh, I have been almost hacked one time before. No kidding. Cause and it is interesting cause it's one thing to get your Instagram hacked, but to get your yeah. uh, OnlyFans hacked is different. Cause you, there's, there's a monetary aspect cause they can switch mm -hmm. all the bank account stuff and, and then exactly. Uh, that's interesting. So it's interesting you said you say that you've never bought anybody else's content. Um, and I don't want to I don't want to shame you on this, but like when you're a stripper, you throw money at other strippers, right? And when you're oh, like, okay, then yeah, I guess. Right. So like, um, to what extent is it that you don't you don't you don't bless other OnlyFans people with a tip here and there? Mm, I wouldn't say. I just don't like customs. I yeah. don't have. I don't reach out for customs. I just watch my own videos. Yeah, I got you. I guess. All right. Yeah, um, I just watch my own videos. 
Um, I want to ask you this. This is, so, yeah. you know, because because I do, and I so I started only fans partially because of um, um, curiosity, my own fun, my own sexy slutty shit, and like yeah. you know, not being and not wanting to be like hypocritical to the people that I interview on this podcast. Um, but I'll reach out to people only fans, be like, hey, like I got this podcast, you would love to have you on, whatever, whatever. And um, recently. There's a vibe and maybe I just hit it. I just hit like a, like a little like a little uh, uh, peak of people that were like, yo, you never even subscribed to my thing. You never bought my customs. You can't interview me type thing. Um, that seems like a weird energy. Um, I don't even know. I don't have a question. I don't I was, I was I'm just bitching. I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you your opinion, but I don't really have a question. Um, seriously, I'm going to ask you um, what things do you want your fans to do after listening to this podcast? Uh, where should we follow you? How do we do the thing? Can we get some kind of um, um, like link that there's some kind of benefit if they follow from this podcast that um, they get a, a a deal or a custom or a whatever? Yeah, so you know that they came from here. Yeah, definitely. So a free nude. Um, so and what I do also is that when you subscribe, if you like on my post, you get a free video. Uh, I do lots of little things like that, but I do have a referral link that I could set up. And yes, you would get like, you'll get a little gift from that. Cool. Um, yeah, I do. I do little games every now and then on my page for content and stuff like that. Like right now I have one running that if you tip $6, you get a six minute and 47 second video. <laughs> but if you tip 10, I send you a little something extra. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. Um, I just, yeah, I really want, I really want to try to integrate the idea that like they listen and they follow. Um, mm -hmm. so we'll get you, we'll follow. So, uh, it's onlyfans.com slash, uh, sinful solar six, six, six. I cannot put the, um, the, the link into the, the comments anymore on the video or it gets flagged on social media. So, oh. um, we're just going to say it a bunch of times. Onlyfans.com says sinful solar six, six, six. And uh, when we'll make a and we'll make a, a disguised link so that you guys can join. Um, and then what other places do we want? Do you want them to follow you on um, Twitter? Do we want them to follow you other places? Instagram? What yeah, other places? Yeah, yeah. Um, I you can follow me on Twitter. My Twitter is simple solar without six 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 for my OnlyFans. OnlyFans.com backslash simple solar six 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 Twitter Twitter.com backslash simple solar. I also have an Instagram and that one is simple solar six, six, six as well. And, um, and do you find that having an Instagram and that kind of thing, does that, is that for a separate thing or are you trying to push those people into your only fans as well? Yeah, that's what I use Instagram for. I also do TikTok. I forgot to mention that but my TikTok is slick, big, six, six, six. Slick. Um, so I, yes, slick, big, six, 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 slick, big, six, six, six. Yeah. S L I C K V I C six six six. I like that. That's so um... I have, yeah. That's um that's my TikTok. Um, you can follow me on anything. I if you don't want to subscribe to my OnlyFans, that's I do take customs in my DMs on Twitter, but only on my safer work. But you do have to tribute before you DM me. Okay, and then I was gonna say, um, once you do, and we won't pump it here, but once you. Uh, once you start stripping again, is that something that you promote across your social media? Yeah, definitely. I used to, you know, do shout outs, come see me at the club. But honestly, uh, I work, I didn't work in my hometown. I worked up in Dallas and in Fort Worth. So um, it was really just a matter of getting regulars and being posted on the, the page for my strip club. That's yeah. what got more people to come in and to start following me. And then they found like, a lot of the people that followed me that were regulars, they, when I made my OnlyFans, they did subscribe because I wasn't at the club anymore and they right. still wanted to see, they still wanted to see me. So being a stripper, honestly, was really beneficial. Yeah. So I, I want to say if you lived in, if you lived, there's a safety aspect to the thing, right? Because you don't want to be, you don't really want your regulars <laughs> to like roll up on you at the, um, at the grocery store. So if you lived in a big city, would you still find a way to not work yeah. near your, where you lived? Oh yeah. I, I refuse to dance in the city that I live in right now. Yeah. yeah. I refuse until I move. I will not be dancing. Got it. Very smart. All right. Well, thank you for, uh, for doing this episode. 
Um, again, check her out, Simple Solar, at uh, Twitter, and you can find all the other links there. Apologies, again, not being able to put the links directly in the comments uh, on these videos. Uh, YouTube has been uh, awful for that <laughs> stuff lately. Um, check her out. Follow her stuff. We're going to try to get a link so that you guys can uh, get a special gift if you follow. Uh, we have a new episode dropping every Monday. Thank you all for listening and watching. If you're listening, uh, we're on all the places. If you switch platforms, we're all the places the podcasts are. And if you want to watch, we have an episode today on YouTube. Please check out all that content, all that good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.